The Phoenix Suns are putting together a historically expensive roster and a team that is going to be together for the next couple of years. This is arguably as all in as any team has ever gone in the history of the league. And by the way, uh, the Phoenix Suns are the sixth seed in the Western Conference. Now, the reason that this is coming up is because the Suns just signed Grayson Allen to a four-year, $70 million extension. Now, obviously, for someone that has bounced around to a handful of different teams throughout his career and has never really been much more than an occasional starter, you know, good shooter, four-year, $70 million is a lot for Grayson Allen. And we can talk about whether he is worth that number or not. Almost certainly, he is not worth that number. But the situation that Phoenix is in and the situation that they have put themselves in is the reason why not only Grayson Allen got this number, but their roster will look the way that it will over the next few seasons because with the expenses that they already have between Devin Booker, Kevin Ramp, Bradley Beal, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, and then all the other you know random minimum guys they have on the roster, the way the rules work now in the NBA, they're over the second apron, they have basically no ability to add players in the offseason apart from signing minimum contract players. And if they had let Grayson Allen leave, if they didn't have him under contract for next season, they would have had to replace him with just a minimum contract guy. That's the way that the rules work now for a team that is spending as much as the Suns are and at that point Grayson Allen and his and his representation understand that they can get an above market value deal because Grayson Allen is worth more to the Suns than he is to any other team and it's interesting as well because it's not just the four years 70 million when you account for the luxury tax and all these other you know thresholds that are put into place this is an unbelievably expensive contract individually and of course the roster as a whole but like I said the Suns didn't really have a choice in this you can argue about the fact that Grayson Allen and helps them with their spacing. He's been way better this year than I think anybody expected. That's awesome. It's not worth four years, 70 million. And that kind of is the theme of this Suns team is they are just continually going all in, all in, all in. Because yeah, I mean, the point is to win the title and they have a really talented group and a team that when healthy has a chance to certainly do some things in the postseason. But the level of expense that they've been willing to go to for a team that is the sixth seed is pretty unprecedented. Now, in terms of some recent teams that have been really expensive, uh, Golden State, State certainly is up there once they re-signed uh, Jordan Poole. Of course, they did that the year after they won the title, and then in the following season, they, or excuse me, offseason, they dumped some salary, got rid of Jordan Poole. Uncertain kind of what the future is going to be there in Golden State. Generally speaking, when teams get to this level of expense, and they're not continually competing for titles, it doesn't last very long. But I don't really think Phoenix is that worried about how long this lasts. When they made the decision to trade for Kevin Durant, when they made the decision to trade for Bradley Beal, they knew that they were trying to open up a title window. And if it went poorly, they'd still have Devin Booker and they would be able to figure it out. And in terms of expense, future draft picks, I kind of respect how all in Phoenix is willing to go, even though on paper, spending this much and doing this much just to be a six seed is not ideal. Now, granted, six seed in this Western Conference this year is still an accomplishment and, and still something that, it you know, it doesn't mean that they can't make a run in the postseason. This is as stacked of a conference as we have seen in a very long time. And if this, if this roster was in the Eastern Conference, they'd probably be the two seed. They'd they probably win 54, 55 games, you know? So uh, it, it's a little bit reductive to just say, oh, they're a six seed and they're, and they're spending this much money uh, because the West is just that good this year. Now, as of this recording, this is before the playoffs actually start. So we don't actually know how all of this pays off for Phoenix. But when you think about a team that is now over $200 million in payroll, what that means for the luxury tax, what that means for the overall expense of the roster, I'm interested to see how long Phoenix can keep this going if maybe they don't perform super well in the postseason. They're going to have an opportunity to make a run here. I like their first round matchup. Um, I think that from a talent perspective, there is no team in the conference they can't beat. There certainly are some matchups that they're not as good against, but it's not a team I would be excited to play. But in a theoretical universe in which the Suns win one playoff game, two playoff games, and they lose in the first round, my guess is because they you know, brought back Grayson Allen, continued to sign guys, they're going to keep running this back and they're going to give it another shot and hope that everybody's healthy next year. Obviously, Beal not being healthy for a good part of the season. It was one of the reasons why the regular season record wasn't as good, but it's just... It, it's easy on the surface to just say, let's spend the money, let's spend the money, let's spend the money. But then if you're not getting any of the return that you thought you would when you either made the Kevin Durant trade or the Beal trade or continue to spend all this money, then it gets a little bit more difficult. I mean, in contrast to a team like Boston that's also spending a ton of money and has this three-year window locked in that we talked about with the Drew Holiday extension and the video on that, they're also going to be spending a ton of money. I mean, their entire starting lineup is going to be making 30 plus million dollars on an annual basis. Every single guy will be. Uh, but the return is more likely to be positive 
Jazz did for Boston. I expect them to make the finals. They're the favorite to win the title at the moment. And that's not the situation that Phoenix is in. That might be where they are next year. You know, who knows how things will work out. But this is the team now for the Suns. In terms of trade flexibility, it's extremely limited. Uh, in the offseason, they can only really bring in minimum contract guys. They don't have any other flexibility outside of that, which again, it's one of the reasons why they had to sign Grayson Allen to the extension to keep him on the team. But still, uh, it, it's one thing to be all in. It's one thing to trade away future picks. We've seen that. It's one thing to spend a lot of money. We've seen that as well. But generally speaking, there's two paths here. Either you end up winning the title like the Warriors did, and it seems worth it. And then obviously the expenses went up after the fact, or you go all in, you invest all this stuff in and it falls apart. And generally speaking, it falls apart pretty quickly. I'm not saying it's going to happen this off season for Phoenix, but like, for example, if they lose in the first round this year, and then they don't make the conference finals next year, it might just be a two year window here in Phoenix. Kevin Durant obviously continuing to get older. Bradley Beal hasn't been any healthier this year than he's been the last couple of seasons. Nurkic has been really good and really healthy, shockingly this season, but you can't expect that to continue over the next handful of years. And they might actually be in a situation where like this year is their best chance. Their chance of making a legitimate run might just continue to decrease over the next couple of seasons while the expenses continue to rise. But like I said, it's hard to be critical of the decision-making of the Suns now because they've already put themselves in this position, right? I mean, you can't really be critical of them giving a big contract to Grayson Allen because they had to do it in order to continue to improve the team. And once you go down this path of spending all this money and investing in the future and being all in, you kind of just have to continue to go down that road. If you're going to be critical of anything, it could be the decision to bring in Kevin Durant in the first place, trading away Mikhail Bridges and Cam Johnson and all those picks. And if it doesn't work out in the end, if Phoenix isn't successful in the postseason in this era, if they don't make the finals, if they don't win a title, I think more so the the criticism of the decision making would go back to that decision. Now, there's no way to know how successful they would have continued to be had they, you know, just made some moves, kept those wings, maybe traded Chris Paul for another guy, maybe still made the Beal trade and not made the Durant trade. There's no way to know how successful they ultimately would have been. And at the end of the day, I struggle to be critical just in general of what the Suns have done because the point of doing all this, certainly with Matt Ishby as the owner, the point of doing all this is to win the title. And every move that they have made has been in an effort to improve their chances of winning the title. The Durant trade, the Beal trade, the Allen extension, all this stuff. They want to win an NBA championship. That is the stated goal, the ownership group there. And everything they've done has been to advance that. And I think certainly within this two-year window, trading for Durant, all the subsequent moves have increased their chances of that. You can argue about the long-term sustainability of this approach. You can argue about how good their chances actually are of making a run in the postseason this year, given their seating. But certainly, even though it is shocking to see Grayson Allen making this much money, it's shocking to see a team as the sixth seed with a $200 plus million payroll. At the end of the day, they still have a legitimate chance. They're still an extremely talented team. And given the way the roster would have looked without some of these moves, it at the moment at least does still feel like a good decision, even though it could become a complete disaster here pretty soon. So at the end of the day, I basically made the video just explain like why they had to make the Grayson Allen deal because I'm sure a lot of other people had the same reaction I did when the news came through. Like that's a lot of money for Grayson Allen, but it basically the options came down to pay him this much money and pay the luxury tax on it or replace him with a minimum contract guy. And then they would be going into next season with like their four guys, Nurkic, Beal, Durant, and Booker. And then the rest of the roster would be minimum contract players. They saw this as a thing where they brought in Allen. He's been good for them. He's valuable for them. And they can't really do better than that. And if they're going to bring in a guy on a minimum or, or on kind of like an under the radar deal, and then they play well, they have to re-sign them. That's the situation that they're in. That's the way the rules have shifted. And it's just interesting to see a team be as expensive as they are, not as successful in the regular season as they would have hoped and continue to go all in on that with rules that are now more restrictive than ever for teams that want to be expensive. And I personally cannot wait to see how this postseason run works out for the Suns.